come tonight. Thank you, you home of harm. Thank you, you Heavenly Father, for law, for, for the many blessings you stored upon him this day. Thank you, you Heavenly Father, how you woke us up early this morning with the finger of love. How you give us traveling mushrooms. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we have so much to be thankful for. It was by your grace and your mercy that you allowed us this time. And we want to praise your holy name. We want to give you the praise because you're worthy of the praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for what you've done. Thank you, for Heavenly Father, for keeping us. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You've been so good to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, help us. Help us build up our faith in you, Lord. Just like you said in your word, Lord. You'll never leave us for a Help us to get that word, to meditate in our heart and our mind. Truly, you, your word is true. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. How you've been by our side. How you looked over. How you walked with us. Are we here tonight for these upon the sound of my voice, Lord? Thank you for them, Jesus. Help us to go forth in you, Lord. Loving one another. Looking out for one another. Helping one another. Lord, we need you, Lord. Set up our hearts on him, Father. Keep us in mind, Lord, with your words and what you say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help the bereaved, Lord, in their time of trouble, God. Go with them, Lord. Waking up their hearts and minds. Let them know you're still in charge. Nothing don't get by you that you don't know. There's still a silver lining in what you do. It may not have not seemed like it right now, Lord. Father, in the by and by, we're all understanding. One day, this prayer I ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to go back to the good book one more time. I'll be reading to you from 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, verses 5 through 8. 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, verses 5 through 8. Now he that has wrought us from the self-same thing is good, God 
who has also given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his most wonderful and powerful word. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree. Wednesday night Bible study, amen, a beautiful song that we know in this time, especially on today, that song really, you have to minister to people when you don't even, not ready for it, amen, and, and I look, let's just say that we need to pray for each other, there are some people really on the edge, okay, they are on the edge, little things, you could do just something, not, not even small thing to, in these times, and they will just burst out in tears or just don't know what to do, then what do you do? You have to be ready for it, amen? So at this time, we're going to stand and have our response to reading coming from Mark 11, 24. Amen. And I'm all behind the flowers. Amen. I got to be loose. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when ye pray, Believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Mark 11, 24. And the congregation? Move mountains. Let's say it again. Move mountains. One more time. Move mountains. Amen. Let's give God a good God bless you. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our praise team to come to minister in songs. And then I will teach it on tonight. I think it's going to be Elder Sanders. Amen. So we're going to prepare ourselves for the word on tonight, and we're just going to let God have his way. Amen? Amen. If you're able to sing along with us, if you're able to stand up on your feet, come on, let's give God his just due. It's been a long day, but we are in the house of God and we're going to praise our Lord and Savior. Amen. Because he's worthy. Hallelujah. Put those hands together. Come on. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Lord, you're awesome. It's the Lord. Lord, you're awesome. Sing it again, say, Lord, Lord, you're awesome. You are awesome. 
awesome, Lord. Lord, you were awesome. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. Say, Lord, Lord, you're awesome. Say, Lord, Lord, you're awesome. Sing it again, say, Lord, Lord, you're awesome. You are awesome, Lord, Lord, you're awesome. If it wasn't for, if it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. Are you singing with us? Lord, Lord, you're awesome. You are an awesome God, Lord. Lord, you're awesome. Yeah, Lord, Lord, you're awesome. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I'd be without you. Come on, come on, put those hands together. Like I said earlier, God deserves all the praise. I refuse to let a rock cry out in my place. Are you going to let a rock cry out in your place? We got to shake the day off. And we got to praise the Lord because he's worthy. Hallelujah. You are awesome. 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 Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. I searched all over and couldn't find. Nobody like you, Lord. You are awesome, Lord. You are, awesome. you are mighty, Lord. You are awesome. 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 Hallelujah. God, you are so awesome. You are name. We can't even, our tongues cannot even comprehend how awesome you are. We can't even come up with the right word to describe how awesome you are. Yeah. Hallelujah. The matchless name of Jesus. Nothing can match you, oh God. Therefore, we can't repay you for all you've done for us. Hallelujah. We can never repay you, Lord. Hallelujah. As I look back over my life, I can see how your love is guiding me. Even though I've done wrong, you never left me alone. But you forgave me. And you kept on blessing. This I recall to my mind. Therefore I have hope. Is it because of your mercy that we are not consumed? Because thy compassion failed not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. 
Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for every, every blessing that you have sent our way. Great blessings and small blessings, all of them count, Father God. Help us to count them all one by one. You are a good God. And you're worthy to be praised. We call out your name, Father God, when we're in trouble. But help us to also call on you when the sun seems to be shining in our lives. Teach us, God, to, to look to the hills from which comes our strength. Let us call on the name of Jesus and plead his blood against all situations. 
Give us, Father God, permission to call ourselves Christians. And give us permission to say amen. Amen and amen. I heard that obedience was better than sacrifice. I found in obedience that I could find a dime in my pocket to try and put on this table every time I come into the sanctuary that God might bless me continuously. Tonight, first of all, let me welcome you to today's Bible study. I think the bishop uh, sneaking up on me at the last minute but what he said was that the giving of the Ten Commandments was an important lesson. So we will be looking at mainly at the 20th chapter of ex Exodus. If you wish to take the time to find it, that would give me license to ad lib just a little while. God said, and is saying, you have seen what I did for you, bringing you out of Egypt, turning the Nile water to blood, covering the land with frogs, changing dust into biting insects, swarms of flies placing a pestilence on their livestock, boils on their own bodies, hail fire from above, locusts eating up their crops. Then the death angel came for the firstborn. Before they knew, <clears throat> before that, they found out that a power greater than their own, magicians and false gods, was at work, and they had to let my It was I that caused you to walk through the water on dry land. I that provided water, bread, and meat in the desert where there should be none. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice in what you do and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for the earth is mine can you hear God talking in 1624 a poet by the name of John Dunn wrote this phrase no man is an island unto himself while he was referring to nations at this time getting along with each other but he was also referring that for good order and community, all should have a relationship to God. There must be a code that everyone should follow. It was apparent in the Garden of Eden. It was apparent in John Dumb's 15th century, and it is still true today. There must be a rule of law that everyone should follow. In Exodus 20, God gives the Ten Commandments. He gives them through Moses in order to establish a moral order. In the beginning, God created us, but he created us to live in community with one another. And this requires order. Now I'm talking about respect for self and respect for others. Where two or three, God said, are gathered in my name, there I will be also in the midst. Exodus 20 and 1 says, And God spoke all these words, saying, <laughs> Does that, that get you lost right quick? God said all these words, saying, now, this being a Bible study, I can uh, 
Uh, can I get someone to go to Judges 5 and read verse 22? Judges 5, verse 22. Judges 5 and 22. Okay. That's not what I wrote down. <laughs> Bless God. Because he is worthy. He is worthy. What words did, did, did God speak? And that's what uh, verse 22 was supposed to say. But evidently I called out the wrong first. These words are called that he spoke the Ten Commandments. Now we know that uh, Moses went up on the mountain and he was gone for 40 days and, and for 40 nights. But after 40 days and 40 nights without a strong and stronger leader present in the camp, the people and Aaron constructed that golden calf. There was a whole lot of mischief going on. <clears throat> and God told Moses to get himself down because there was a noise in the camp. God's mighty act of delivering the people of Egypt will not be attributed to that calf. God was not going to stand for it, and he intended for Moses to fix it saying in verse 4, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Not only don't make it, but don't worship it. Don't worship idols. And the building of them is also forbidden. It in, this includes pictures, images, statues, Anything used for, birth, for, for worship, used to portray any false god, you shall not bow down to them, nor serve them, and he visits the iniquity of the fathers on to the children, to the third and fourth generations, through inherited weaknesses, diseases, and shortened lifespan. But he shows mercy to thousands who love him and keep his commandments. God reveals himself to the Israelites and to uh, us in this primary way through his word. So God constructing any idol or worshiping God, the people, man, Constructing any idol or worshiping anything other than Jehovah God is to draw the people's focus away from God's word. God is speaking on the mountain to his chosen people. And he is telling them all of the things that they must do because he has chosen them. And in his authority, he has done all these things for them. He caused all the nine uh, plagues in Egypt. He caused the water to abate and let the people come across on dry land. God was responsible for all of that, and he was telling them that under his authority, under his authority, he is choosing them to obey him. Amen? Verse 7 says, taking God's name in vain. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. What does that mean, taking God's name in vain? 
It means being careless with the name of God. It means using his name in some frivolous, unnecessary way. It means cursing in the name of God. You are not God. How can you curse in God's name? And some things just seem so minor when you say stuff like, oh my God. That's actually taking God's name in vain for what is the purpose? It is not to honor God. It is not to cause something to happen in God's name that is in God's will. It's simply a expression. Sometimes it's about surprise. Sometimes it's about something that you can't do anything about and you thought uh, that you couldn't do anything about. These first four, and there's one more, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, the Sabbath was given to, the, to Israel, to the nation of Israel. And why? Because in the garden, in the beginning, God <clears throat> did all of his creative work in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. Six days shall you labor, it says, and do all your work. The Sabbath was given to the nation of Israel for strict observance. They were supposed to observe the Sabbath. It was the forerunner of the rest that believers today enjoy in Christ and, and which redeemed, which a redeemed creation will enjoy in the hereafter. We all worry about the hereafter, but sometimes we like, we got to stop talking about the by and by and start talking about the here and now. You got to do your work while it's day because night is coming. Time is a gift from God and like all of his other gifts, it must be used according to the giver's guidelines. God says, this is the way I want you to use your life. But he gives us a choice to do right or to do wrong. But in order to enjoy what he has given us to the fullest, we got to do what the giver says. The commandment recognizes that work is also a gift of God. But it must be balanced by an appropriate time of rest. You can't just go, 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 and then go. There's got to be a time for you to recover. You can, you, you can reboot yourself just like you reboot a computer that runs down. And mine did that today. <coughs> it didn't want to work for me. I had to, it wanted to give me what it wanted to give me and not what I wanted it to give me, but it did what it did, and we are here today. God doesn't say everything's going to be perfect all the time, but he says, I'm giving you time. I'm giving you time to please me. That's what God says. Now, you can take that time and go your own way and be lost but you can take that time and go God's way and just be joyful. These first uh, four commandments deal with man's relationship to God, but the next six deal with man's relationship with each other. It says, honor thy father and thy mother. In verse 12. Here, honor means and teaches that life of obedience to parents is the type of life which in general ensures light length of days. In contrast to a life of disobedience and sin, which often leads to premature death and misery. This is the first commandment with promise 
uh, that was attached. Did you ever hear, I, I, I brought you into this world, and if you don't straighten up, I, I'm going to take you out. It teaches respect for authority. You may not like all the rules that come to you, but you are required to give them weight. You can't be so quick to give a response just because that's what you feel down on the inside. You've got to consider what the tongue is doing to someone else. It's his ear. Amen? Honor thy mother and father that you may have longer life. Remainder says, uh, the next 13, verse 13 says, Thou shalt not kill. We put people in the gas chamber. We, we give them lethal injections. Yeah. But that's not the, 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 the area that this commandment is talking about. Because even in the Bible, it says if you do certain things, you should be put to death. My, uh, 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 who's going to do the, the putting? It is the people, because God has made a rule, and the rule has been disobeyed. And if the rule is severe enough, then the result is being put to death. Thou shalt not murder. Later on in the New Testament, it says, Thou shalt not kill without purpose. There's a difference between capital punishment and manslaughter. When you murder someone, you're doing that for your own personal reasons. Manslaughter is kind of an act that occurs and you find that someone loses their life because of an accident or because of your action. This commandment teaches respect for human life. Verse uh, 14 says, you shall not commit adultery. The marriage bed, the state of marriage, is honorable, supposedly being among all men, all mankind. We hear in the United States believe in one wife or one man, one mate. In the Garden of Eden, God put Adam and joined her, him to Eve, and they together became one flesh. This doesn't mean that they're not going to have arguments. This doesn't mean that you will never disagree with your mate. But the, the key to it all, when you turn the key, is that you both go through the same door. You have the same goal to accomplish. A joined life to live. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, I can get away with this. Ain't nobody looking. I'll, I'll, park my, I'll park my car over here in this parking lot and I'll wait on you to come. And then we can get in the same car and go somewhere. Wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Don't steal, verse 15. Don't steal. It doesn't belong to you. Yes, ma'am.
that it was said by men of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say to you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Somebody said, I think some old wise tale said everything that shine, that's glitters is not gold. That's true. But you have a commitment over here. And that commitment is in a covenant that you made with someone when you promise that you would be with them for the rest so long as we life have life with each other. So looking and then imagining what it could be, what it would be, but not what it should be. It's not profitable for the upkeep of the marriage, of the marriage, of the relationship. Even in your, uh, in your inward thinking, whether you take action or not, Jesus is saying you already committed what you thought out. We sit sometimes in daydream and things will come in because we have let ourselves be idle. And we're told that idleness is the playground of the devil. And Jesus goes on to say, It has been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a, a, a written, a, a writing of divorce. Every time you divorce a person, you're still tied to that person, especially if there's children involved. And that's a, a, a fight that you're going to have to deal with, whether you like it or not. It gets so nasty and ugly sometimes. But evil comes in and causes a separation. Moses gave permission for a divorce. But it was because of the heart of those involved in the marriage. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Take no thought, saying, what shall we do? The good thing about that is it said we. Divorce means putting away, giving up. Is your marriage worth fighting for? Do you think that you're not going to have arguments? Did you think that because it says one, that two become one, that you're not going to have some reasonable thought about which way things should go? And it's time to discuss between you and she, you and, and them, rather than argue, fight, and fuss. The goal should be in unison, a common end. To a common goal. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your own stature? heard that it 
it been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thine oaths. You promised your mate until death do us part. You shall not commit adultery. Now, adultery may, call, may cover a lot of more forms than just the marriage. Unwed sexual relationships. That is adultery. That's doing adult things that you won't confess before children. Adultery, unlawful sexual behavior. You are warned in this commandment to abstain. Not only that, don't even think about it seriously. Verse 15 says, you shall not steal. If it does not belong to you, why would you take it without permission? That's called stealing. You go into a, the children, go into a store and pick up something and put it in their pocket. That's stealing. Picking up money that you saw the person in front of you drop on the ground, picking it up and putting your foot on top of it so that they can't see that they dropped. That's stealing not yours it's not yours back to adultery that other person's mate is not yours and you are not theirs that's stealing and you're, depri you're depriving that other person of something that belongs to them that they should be able to use So this, this commandment actually, when it's whittled down, teaches respect for somebody else's private property. Now, you shall not steal. Verse 16. You shall not buy, bear false witness. Why lie? You're breaking down somebody else's character. And your own. Lying for some personal gain of yours in order to harm somebody else. Or to, be, or to besmirch somebody else's character. You lie for an advantage for yourself. But one lie gains another lie, which gains another lie, which requires you to think of another lie to cover those four lies. It's not profitable for you. You're trying to make them look bad. But when the lie comes to light, the looking bad is on you. And you then try to lie to uncover or to cover up what's been uncovered. Lying don't end, doesn't have an end. Because it's wrong in the first place. It had a beginning. This is one of the things that has a beginning that never has an end. Because you, you got to fix it all the time. The only thing that's safe is the truth. You, 
you don't have to fix the truth because it is. It's just like God. When God said, I am, that was it. He is. The truth is. And God is the truth. You shall not bear false witness. If you, ha if you know the truth of a thing, tell the truth. Don't make up something. Now, sometimes I jokingly say, I don't know, but if you give me time, I'll make it up. I'll make something up for you. But I'm telling the joke when I say that. That, that means leave me alone. I just don't know. You asked me once and I told you I don't know, that means I don't know. You ask me a third or fourth time, I'm telling you, give me some time. I'll make something up. It's going to be a lie, but I'll make something up. The big commandment, and all of them are important, but it says you shall not covet. And that goes back to not committing adultery. You, you've chosen the mate that you have chosen. Why would you be concerned about someone else's mate? Doesn't belong to you. That's stealing. That's in your head. Oh, that looks good to me. Wonder how it would work out this way. Sure would be nice. It's going to take you straight to hell. You won't even have a hand basket. You shall not covet. The Tenth Commandment passes from what you do to what you think. And it shows that it is sinful to lust after anything that God never intended for you to have. Paul states that this commandment produces a deep conviction of sin. Now let's, 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 let's short this by going to Romans 7 and 7. What shall we say then? Is the law of sin just because you don't like it? Is the law of sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin except by the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said, Thou shalt not. God, in order to create a community life for his chosen people, was giving them this information so that they could get along together. That they could get along together with each other. So going back, we found that in the 19th chapter of Exodus that Moses first went to the mountain with the people, took them in a place where they could retreat and rest up from their travels. So he began, God begins to tell them how they should respect him, God. Moses told the people to, in three days, I want you to be all cleaned up and ready to meet God. 
So they got themselves ready. They abstained from sexual relationships. They washed themselves. They kept themselves clean. They got prepared to meet God. And God came down and gave them the Ten Commandments on the mountain in the desert of Sinai. There was thundering and lightning and trumpeting, but they heard the voice of God. But God wrote these Ten Commandments and gave them in a voice. Anytime you worship some other thing other than Jehovah God, you're taking what God gave away. God gave his word. When you worship false idols or false things, you, you're detracting from the word that God has given for not only the Israel nation to go by, but for us today. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Because he's going to supply all of my need. But I have to have patience that God's going to do what God says he's going to do. Moses was gone 40 days and 40 nights on the mountain. The people lost patience. They had been provided for in Egypt for all of those years that they were there, some 400 years. They had all that they needed. Their need was supplied to them in Egypt. What they didn't have was the freedom to worship their God. You have that freedom. You can worship God. When we walk in saying praise the God, praise God everybody, and we mean it, that's worshiping God. Not entity. In Egypt, they worshiped all kinds of gods, a god of the water, a god of the sky, the moon, the sun, the, the plants, the animals. Uh, didn't matter. These were gods that couldn't come to them. If you wanted those gods in the meeting, you had to bring them. Or you had to go where they were. No advice would come out of their throat. But God said in the beginning, was the word, John said, of, of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. God said. God spoke on the mountain in the midst of the smoke that covered the mountain. Scared the people. They told Moses, you talk to God, then tell us what God said. We, we don't want to talk to God no more because we want to live. We don't think that if we, if we go to God in person, we may not survive. And Moses said to the people, fear not, for God has come to prove you. God has come to test you. We're tested every day. Every day when you get up, you don't know whether the floor is going to hold you, whether your balance is going to sustain you. You don't know whether you're going to fall or trip or run into something that you didn't. You don't know what's going to happen. 
You don't know what's around the corner when you're walking, but God knows all things. God has come to prove you, and that his fear, his respect, may be before your faces that you sin not. Why does God give you his word for you to absorb? It is so that you sin not. If you follow God's word and do all you can to be and, st to be and stay in his will, God's going to 